Well, good morning. It's good to be with you today and uh, excited to continue our series called Shift, Rethinking Your Parenting. I wonder how many of you have ever uh, encountered an out of control kid in the grocery store? You ever kind of experienced that? How many of you have ever had an out of control kid in the grocery store, right? Yeah, we've all, we've all been there. That's even worse. You know, you're, you're in the checkout line, kid sees a bag of Sour Patch Kids right there and they want it now and they are not going to give up until they let you fully know that they want that that candy right now and and the scream fest commences and everything the parent tries to do the first attempts to kind of quietly calm and distract them just seems to to not work at all and 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 all of the best parenting strategies go out the window in that moment right it's like desperation parenting sets in. You know what desperation parenting is, right? We've all been there if you're, if you're a parent. Uh, it, it's that moment where you just go, I, I don't care. I'm going to do whatever. Everything I said I, I hold about parenting is gone. I'm going to just make sure this gets solved right now. Um, you know, before we become parents, we think we're experts in parenting, right? Uh, we, we think that we know everything about that. We read some books, a few blog posts, and we think we're going to have it all under control. We're telling our, you know, our young married friends who don't have kids yet either. We're like, we will be utilizing a high love and high authority combination of a parenting style so our child will understand completely that they are fully secure and loved, and yet they'll know the boundaries that are around them. You know, you're, you're saying things like this, and then the kid gets here, and you go, oh, I know nothing. I, I, I know absolutely nothing. And those, those moments in the grocery store are like that. The strategies just go away. They're, they're just gone. You go, I don't know how to control the situation, because in that moment, we, we start to feel like, we have lost control. And there's nothing more important to you in that moment than, than regaining control because there's nothing worse than feeling like an out-of-control parent because you not only don't like the way they're acting because of it, but you, you feel the stares and the eyes and, and everybody looking at you and, and will do anything in that moment sometimes to regain control. It might be yelling to get them to stop. It might be leaving the store, leaving your groceries on the conveyor belt. Uh, it, it might even be just giving in and just buying uh, the stinking candy. Um, You know, my mom told me a story just yesterday. We do a weekly Zoom call, my brother and I and our families and my mom, and and started this last March, and we keep doing it. And and my mom was telling me about a time my senior year of high school, and I'd forgotten this, but I do remember it now. She said we were were somewhere across town, we were driving home, and, and I said, Mom, can we stop somewhere and get something to drink? And uh, she's like, no, no, I'm really tired. Mom, can we stop somewhere and get something to drink? No, I'm really tired. I kept asking, kept asking, kept asking. And finally she goes, okay, fine. So she pulls into like a a Carl's Jr. or something, orders the drink. We're in that that spot in the drive-thru between the ordering board and where they actually give you the food. And she said, I told her, I knew if I asked you enough times, you would finally do it. To which she then pulled up to the window and said, I'm sorry, we need to cancel that order and uh, and drove on out of there. But uh, that's right. You can applaud my mom. She's probably watching online. And um, we, we've all been there, though, where it's just like, just give in. I just don't even want to deal with this anymore. I just want the situation done. Anyone here ever identify with those feelings? Like, you just want things back in control? Yeah, yeah, I see lots of hands. It is, it's hard. Parenting can quickly become about controlling behavior. We want to get the bad behavior to stop or the good behavior to begin. And that's not all bad. If you were with us last week, we, we talked about protecting and moving to preparing and All protection is not bad, just like controlling behavior is not bad. But when it becomes our sole focus in parenting, it's not the best thing. Maybe it's your your kid's room is just a mess. Like, I mean, it's it's so messy that you're grabbing some COVID-19 PPE and putting it on before you go in the room to even tackle what's going on there. But you just want it clean. So you start making deals to fix the immediate behavior instead of really thinking maybe about what's long term. Your toddler throws a tantrum. And rather than taking time to figure out what consequences might be best or how to handle the situation with kind of a long-range view, you you just give them the toy they want so they'll stop annoying you and they'll leave you alone. Your teenager makes a disrespectful comment to you in front of your friends. I know that's never happened to any parents of teenagers. But rather than dealing in a mature manner with them, you zing them back with a comment of your own so they'll stop and you won't lose face in front of your friends. You know, parenting comes at us so fast That sometimes it feels like we're just doing our best to avoid those major losses of control and any major train wrecks. We're we're disciplining on the fly sometimes instead of having a long-term goal of where we really want them to go. And it's one of those things, discipline, that can be tough to figure out. Am I overdoing it? Am I not doing enough? Is it actually getting through? 
What am I actually accomplishing with this? So today, the shift we're going to look at is this, rethinking, controlling behavior versus building character. Now, if you weren't with us last week or you're just kind of jumping into this, this first one, whether you're maybe watching it online right now or maybe later down the road, uh, I gave a disclaimer last week and I'll give it again. You don't get to check out of this series just because you're not in the active parenting seat. Whether you haven't had kids yet, you've already had them, you, you never had them and never want them, whatever you, you are in in that, you don't get to check out of this series because you may discover some things still that you can maybe pass on about parenting to somebody who is in that seat. Or even bigger than that, you're going to discover some things each week that are going to apply right to you that you can go, okay, I need to do something with this. Just like last week as we talked about putting on the armor of God and preparing for the battle, there's as much takeaway for ourselves as there is to our, our kids. So you're going to walk away with something, I think, today that you can apply to your life no matter where you're at. Because discipline, the idea of it even, is, is tough. It's tough to do as a parent, but it's also tough to realize that we, as Christians, experience God's discipline sometimes. As a child of God, do you realize that the, the Bible talks about discipline quite a bit, both in the parenting realm and in how we experience God's discipline? So today we're going to look at, at Hebrews chapter 12 at a passage that deals with God's discipline of us. And I want us to look at that and explore it for ourselves, but also pull out some things for how it really does impact how we discipline our kids. There's some principles in here that are gonna kind of go into that realm as well. So before we, we look into Hebrews 12, I hope you'll, you'll turn there in your Bible or open to that in a, a Bible app. Um, we're gonna pray and ask God just to, to speak to us this morning. Father God, I thank you for every person who's here, every person who's, who's watching online or who's watching in the, the courtyard or the family room, Lord. I pray that you would, Lord, just speak to us today from your word. Help us to know you more. Help us to engage with your word in a fresh way. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to know how we can parent better, but also how we can experience your discipline better. So Father, we give you this time and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now this is in Hebrews 12. We don't, we don't know who the author of Hebrews was. Some, the early church, many claimed it was Paul, but we don't know that for sure. And it contains many references to Old Testament scriptures and possibly written to believers from a Jewish background. So we're going to jump right into Hebrews 12 where he's talking about the issue of God disciplining Christians. And here's the first point that I want us to get today is that loving parents discipline their kids. Loving parents discipline their kids. Look with me. In Hebrews 12, starting in verse 5, it says this, And you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly or lose heart when you are reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and punishes every son he receives. Endure suffering as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? When difficulties enter our lives, it's really easy to just kind of cry out, but why? Why is this happening, God? Why me? Why now? Why not them? Why not my neighbor? They're kind of jerks. Why not them? Why is this happening to me? And, and those why questions, they'll start early, right? I, I know, you know, the toddler life of, of why questions, back when you have a, when you have a three-year-old asking why, it's like, Daddy, why are you, why are you picking up your, your, your keys? Well, I need them to start the car. Well, why do you, you have to go in the car? Well, I, I need the car to go to work. Why do you have to go to work? I have to go to work to make money so I can feed you and stuff. You know, it's like, it's like the why trail never ends with toddlers. And it, it, it gets worse in the teenage years too, right? It's the why goes on because now there's deeper levels of thinking. And it's like, well, why is this? I read this over here that says you should be doing this. You're like, I didn't read that and just do it because I said so. You know, it's, it's uh, the why questions are tough. We want to know why tough things happen to us. But the writer of Hebrews is saying here, have you really forgotten why this is taking place? Why these hard suffering times are there? Do you really not know? He's like, really? Really? Because I want to focus in for a moment here on that last part of verse 7. It says, for what son is there, or daughter, for what son or daughter is there that a father or mother does not discipline? For what son is there that a father does not discipline? You see, Discipline is a sign of a parent's love. It's a sign of a parent's love. You know, you remember being disciplined as a kid 
and your parents told you I'm doing this because I love you? Oh my gosh, right? You're like, really? I don't think so. Like in that moment, you're going, I don't believe that. I think you are actually lying to me right now, mom. It, it, it is so hard to understand at that time, but discipline truly is a sign of a, our, a parent's love. Now, part of the problem is our culture, in our culture, we don't have a very good understanding of what love is. We think love is uh, an emotion or maybe it's a tone we take towards somebody. We, we don't realize though, that the biblical love is about doing what's in the best interest of the other person. It's about doing what is actually best for them. You know, I love my wife when I do what's best for her. I love my kids when I do what's best for them. Part of that is spending quality time with them, listening to them. Sometimes it's, e it's even picking up a drink from Starbucks on the way home. But the part about love we can't miss is that it's also about not being afraid to correct. When we see something going out of alignment and saying, hey, let's just bring this back in line. We need to readjust this. You know, think about this. If, um, when my kids were first learning to put on their shoes and tie their shoes and stuff, they wouldn't always get it right. Sometimes, they, you know, they put the shoes on the wrong foot. And what if one of my kids, when they were little, if they had put on the shoes on the wrong feet, and I said, oh, that's so cute. I don't want to rain on her parade. Just, just let her wear her shoes on the wrong feet. Just go out there and, and, and go through your day. Well, she wears them that way, let's say, day after day. It's going to start causing issues. She's going to, I don't know, maybe start walking in a circle or something all the time. Um, it's going to cause some, have some pain in her feet. So was I loving by not correcting her about the shoes on the wrong feet? No. I was actually unloving. I was unloving by, by not wanting to offend her little maybe toddler mind and, and deal with that and, and help her get on the right track. Learning to love others the way we're taught in Scripture is a, a huge journey. And I want to mention, I, we want to use this series to resource you well. And let me mention one, one resource for you in our church, which is a, for any of you married couples, especially if you're in the season of parenting, um, we have a great ministry in our church called Married Life. And I really believe that one of the best things you can do to grow your parenting is to grow a healthy marriage. It's really difficult to parent well when there's tension and strain and things like that going on in the marriage. And so I'd encourage you to take a look at the, the Married Life page on our, our website because it really is all about doing marriage better and finding ways to grow in that relationship. But discipline means, loving our kids means that we, we discipline them. Now, Proverbs 3 is actually, uh, verses 11 and 12, is actually the verses that are being quoted here at the beginning of, of Hebrews 12, uh, where we started reading today. And here's what it says there. Do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son, and do not loathe his discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. A loving father or mother disciplines the son or daughter they love. Now, we have some options it gives us here of how we respond to God's discipline. We can take it lightly, or we just kind of ignore it. We start hearing this, this voice from God or some consequences start coming. We ignore it. It's no big deal. We can lose heart, or we can kind of uh, feel knocked down or discouraged. We can despise it or loathe it where we just hate this and wish this wasn't happening and we just want to complain and gripe about it and think about it. This is the same way our kids can respond to discipline in the family setting. They can ignore it, the discipline, just keep on doing what they're going to do. They can feel defeated. Maybe they give up and they become completely discouraged because maybe, it's, maybe sometimes it's too intense of a discipline. They could hate it. They could end up despising you for the discipline. So as we discipline, we need to help our kids see the big picture so they can receive it well and not ignore it or feel defeated or, or hate it, but to see it and receive it well. Because discipline is about, this is bigger than just um, punishment when something goes wrong. Discipline is about the whole picture of correcting and training and building up a kid into an adult who can be a you know, contributing member of society and loves God and, and wants to follow Jesus with their whole heart. So we have a responsibility to develop character in our kids through conversation, responsibilities, teaching, and yes, sometimes discipline and punishment. That's why it's important we help them see the, the why behind discipline. I joked about because I said so earlier, but because I said so doesn't hold up for very long, right? Uh, it, it works for a season, but because I said so, it isn't a great long-term strategy. We, we got to be able to help them see, here's why this is important. 
Here, here's why this is. Don't you, doesn't it help you follow a rule when you know there's a why behind it? Like when there's a rule in your workplace or somewhere you go and you're like, this is pointless. I don't understand this. I don't know why we have this particular rule. So it, it helps always to know the why behind a rule. Proverbs 13, 24 says this, the one who will not use the rod hates his son, but the one who loves him disciplines him diligently. A righteous person eats until he is satisfied, but the stomach of the wicked is empty. Now, my goal today is not to debate spanking versus not spanking, but let's take a look at this. The writer of this proverb is saying the parent who doesn't discipline actually hates their child, while a parent who loves their child is faithful to discipline. If your goal is to be your kid's best friend, then it might seem like the loving thing to do to never discipline them. But if your goal is to build up their character for the long run, then your best move is to wisely and consistently provide discipline. You know, discipline, it, loving parents discipline their kids, but it, discipline is a, it's a mark of true sonship. It's one of the ways you know, like they belong to you. This is how we know God is dealing with you as sons. Our passage helps us see why God's discipline matters, giving us this picture of how we ought to discipline with our kids. Why does God discipline us? Because we're his children. Why do we discipline our kids? Because they're our children. It's not my job to discipline my, my neighbor's kids. And one of my neighbors is, is sitting in this service today. He lives right across the street from me. It's not my job to discipline his kids. It's, it's my job to discipline my kids. Sometimes my, my kids will say something like, well, so-and-so's parents let them do blank, whatever it is. Watch this movie, have this app, um, go, you know, rob liquor stores, whatever it is. <laughs> Maybe not that. Um, we cut off that friendship. But so-and-so's parents let me do this. And, and what I'll tell them is I'm not in charge of them. That's great that they let them do that. That's wonderful. There's some things that we probably don't let you do, do or let you do that, that they don't let their kid do. Like, I'm not in charge of their kids. I'm in charge of my kids. I'm, I'm not in charge of anybody else's kids. And so we, we're disciplined by God because we're his children. And discipline happens best in the context of relationship. And when we're in relationship with God, we can receive his discipline. A, a father who doesn't discipline his son is not fulfilling his role as a father. A daughter who doesn't receive discipline is missing out on the full picture of her role as a daughter. When discipline is given and received in the context of relationship, it can fulfill its, its purpose and it can truly help us grow. So if you love your kids, you, you discipline them. So here's a question for those of you who are actively parenting, or maybe you have some sort of parenting role with your grandkids or something like that, are you loving your kids by disciplining them? Or are you letting them run wild because somehow you think that's the loving thing to do? Are you disciplining them? The second thing I want us to look at today, and that is that our loving father disciplines us. So loving parents discipline their kids, but our loving father disciplines us. Our passage goes on in, in verse 8 through 10. It says, but if you are without discipline, which all receive, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we had human fathers discipline us and we respected them. Shouldn't we submit even more to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time based on what seemed good to them, but he does it for our benefit so that we can share his holiness. Think about this. Loving parents discipline their kids. Your loving father disciplines you as his child. Some of you may need to fully grasp the concept that God is a loving father. Now, that may be hard for some. Maybe your, your father was absent or wasn't loving at all. Maybe it was the opposite, in fact. And so grasping that God is a loving father is a, dif a difficult thing sometimes for some of you to grasp. And, and some of us, maybe you need to recognize that, that God's love and his discipline work together, that one does not negate the other one. Now, some of you, every time something falls apart in your life, you think to yourself, well, obviously God doesn't love me because he let this happen. He must not. Or some of you may even think, God doesn't love me since he made this happen. And you blame him for the difficulties in your life and see it as a sign that you're not loved by him. It's important to realize you are deeply loved by God. But that does not mean 
that everything in your life will be perfect and there won't be any challenges. If you've walked with Jesus for more than a year or two, you know it will not be perfect and there will be challenges. Because God deeply loves us, he'll allow those challenges and he'll use those to accomplish his purposes. He'll use those to shape us. You know, God's discipline marks us as his children. It marks us as his children. You know, just like we noticed in the first part of the passage, a sign of being someone's child is that they discipline you. So when we receive God's discipline, we shouldn't go, God, why? We should go, oh, God, thank you that I'm your child. Thank you that I, you love me enough to correct me. Thank you that you love me enough to, to show me where I'm off and where I need to make adjustments in my life. And this shows that I belong to you. It's much worse to never be disciplined by God, it tells us here. To not be one of his children, illegitimate, as it said in the passage. To just be playing the church game, but not actually be experiencing his transforming work in our lives. Just quick show of hands. Have any of you here ever struggled with sin? Anyone? Yeah, and those of you who didn't raise your hand, you're, you're struggling with lying currently. Um, so we'll, we can talk about that after the service. Just, we'll just meet outside the lobby. But um, if you're really honest, at some point you may have said something like this to yourself. How can I really be a Christian if I struggle with blank? Right? If that, how, how can I really be a Christian if I struggle with this? This ugly thing, maybe nobody knows about it or only a few people do. How can I be a Christian if I struggle with this? One way we actually know we belong to God is when we experience his discipline when we sin. In fact, I would say that if, you, if you've said that, like, man, how can I be a Christian when I struggle with this? If you're struggling with it, it's a mark that the Spirit is active within you. If there is a desire in you at any level to fight and say, ah, this isn't me, I don't want this, that is a mark that God is working in your life. And so he, he, he brings that discipline. Sometimes it might be in the form of, of consequences that correct us and drive us back to him. Other times it might be just a feeling that the Holy Spirit places in just kind of our gut where we feel it. We just know, I should have done that. He needs to bring me back onto the, the right track for my life. So his discipline marks us as his child. Also, here's the thing. God's discipline requires our submission. God's discipline re requires our submission. Discipline really doesn't work well unless we submit to it. Unless we choose to submit to that. The writer here says we respected our, our fathers for disciplining us, so we should respect God for it even more. I know in the moment we don't always respect the discipline we receive. I mean, I remember still going away to college um, some years ago. I won't say how long now, but uh, I remember going away to college and within about six months, my parents' intelligence level in my eyes just grew through the roof. I don't know if you had that experience as you kind of moved away from home. It was like, wow, they're not dumb after all. Like they knew a few things. They actually had some things to say that were pretty right on. And with my kids, there's times where we discipline and they fight it. And parents, those of you who are actively parenting right now, like if you, you know that, right? You discipline your kids and they fight you on it. They don't want to receive the discipline. They don't want to be corrected, whatever the method is you may be using. And that never ends well, right? Like when you're disciplining and they're fighting you on it, it never ends well. It only results in more consequences. And when, but when they'll submit to it, they actually will learn from it. If you fight God in his discipline, it's not going to end well. It's only going to become worse. It's only going to become more difficult. But if you submit yourself to God's discipline, he brings life. Submission isn't a, in, in the context here, it's, it's not a, a forced idea. Like it's not, he is pushing us into submission. It's us voluntarily choosing to submit ourselves to that. Not the picture of like, a, uh, like an MMA fighter who's holding somebody down in a, a submission hold. But rather, it's a loving God saying, putting that pressure on, and we decide, okay, God, I'm going to allow this because I'm going to receive this because I need to learn from you because, God, you know what's best, and I'm willing to endure whatever that may look like. You see, God's discipline grows us in holiness. God's discipline grows us in holiness. Our earthly parents disciplined us for a short time and just based on what they thought was best. But God disciplines you for a lifetime, and he always knows what's best. Just a side note here. 
Some of you, I'll, I'll talk particularly to those of you who are maybe parenting or those of you who have raised kids. I, I, I talked to somebody last week after the service who said, oh, I felt bad today because, you know, I wish I'd done things differently. Um, let me just tell you, some of you are way too hard on yourselves. Parents, some of you are just so hard on yourselves. And moms, I want to talk to you in particular. Some of you moms are too hard on yourselves. You know, I, I hear about mommy guilt, right? I hear about this, and it's a real thing that this, all the pressure that some of you place on yourselves to be this perfect mom and get everything right all of the time, never make a mistake, your house is supposedly going to be perfectly clean, and your kids are going to be perfectly behaved, and you're going to just well balance everything. Don't put so much pressure on yourself to constantly question and over-question and overthink even your discipline. You're human. You're not perfect, and you're not going to get it right all the time. So we have to do our best to be led by God, but let him have the results. Here's some bad news. Sometimes we mess up when we discipline our kids. We discipline briefly with limited knowledge and sometimes bad motives. That's just a reality. But the good news is that God knows what he's doing. And God, his discipline will never go too far. And it will never not go far enough. It will always be just right. Why does God discipline us? For, for our holiness. So we can share in his holiness. You know, God's primary aim in life isn't to develop just a sense of happiness, but actually a sense of holiness in our lives. He wants us to be like him. And I don't want to talk too much about that today because Pastor Monty is going to talk about that uh, this next week, about happiness versus holiness. I'll just say this. God disciplines us because he, he loves us. He knows what's best. And he wants to develop holiness in us. Again, we want to resource parents and um, Last week, we had a book called Parenting is, is Heart Work, and you bought all of them. Um, by the time the, the second service, like they were coming like, hey, we're sold out. So we ordered more, and so we have more of those if you want to pick that up. But there's also a book we have there by Gary Thomas, a book called Sacred Parenting. And this book has the idea of what if parenting wasn't just about what you're doing for your kids and in your kids, but what if parenting was actually the process God uses to develop holiness in you? What if parenting is a process God uses to make you look more like Jesus? So we've, we've got that available today over at, at Mag Central as well for you to, to take a look at. But here's a question. Are you, are you submitting yourself to the process of God's discipline that he uses in your life? Doesn't always mean there's some big sin issue lurking around the corner, but God may be using pain to shape and mold your character. So loving parents discipline their kids our loving Father disciplines us. There's a third thing here is that discipline is short-term pain for long-term growth. Short-term pain for long-term growth. Verse 11 of Hebrews 12 says, No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. This is the main thing I want us to get today. That the point of discipline isn't what's happening right now, but what is God doing through it in the future? What is he working towards? We endure God's discipline for the short term so we, sh so we can grow in the long term. We discipline our kids for the short term so they can build character in the long term. You see, discipline is painful in the moment. Discipline's painful in the moment. That is a reality. No matter if it's spanking or taking a phone away or sending them to their room, it's, it's painful. I know for us as parents, sometimes we have to get creative in our discipline. We, we took away screen time from one of our kids. That's kind of our, our go-to in our house uh, in 2021 is screen time. But um, she said, I don't care about screen time. We're like, okay, well, we're going to take this away. She's like, I don't care about that. You can't take anything away I don't care about. She goes, I don't care about anything except God. And we're like, all right, well, I can't take away God. What do I do with that, you know? Um, sometimes we have to get creative in that, that discipline process. But it is painful, whether it's something removed or a punishment that's given. We have to recognize that it's painful sometimes for them and for us. We have to recognize that we will sometimes experience the pain of God's discipline. It's incredibly difficult to see the benefits of discipline when you're in the middle of it. You know, in the moment, you know, my 13-year-old is never going to say, hmm, Dad took my phone away. I am so grateful that he's, he, he is helping me develop greater self-control. 
I, I can really see how this is going to make me become a better adult, and this is just going to contribute. Man, what a great dad I have. I guarantee you the conversation in the Lovato home never goes that way in the moment. It's not realized in the moment. It is painful there. But on the other side, down the road, we see what God does. You know, I, I try to run three days a week, and um, I'll be honest, I never get up wanting to go for a run. I, I wake up and I will try and figure out anything else I can do. If it's a little hot, I'm like, I'll run in the house. And then I've got this stinking heart rate monitor on my wrist, and I look at it, and I'm like, oh, well, that's not in my zone. I need to get in. That wasn't good. Plus, I was watching my Today Show as I cruised by over and over again. So I, I don't ever want to go for a run. I don't. The first little bit hurts. I feel stiff. Uh, I'm in my 40s now. My knee will start to hurt a little bit as I get out there. And I don't ever want to do it, but I, I do. I get up. I, I put the shoes on. I get, get dressed. And I choose that temporary difficulty because I've got a bigger end game in mind. I, I choose that this is going to hurt a little bit, but in the end, it's going to be worth it. I'm training myself for something else. That's true about our Christian maturity too. It's not always exciting and fun to get up and read your Bible. It's not. You, sometimes you would rather uh, do anything else. Some of you didn't want to come to church today. You don't have to raise your hands here, but I know some of you didn't. But you chose to. You, went, you know what? I'm tired. I'd rather sleep in. I'd rather do something else. But I'm going I'm to go. I'm going to be with God's people. I'm going to hear his word. And you know you'll be better for it because you did. Maturity is, is choosing the pain for the moment because you know something better is coming. You know that there's something better down the road. You see, discipline is worth it in the long run. Discipline is worth it in the long run. The second part of, of, of verse 11 really gives us this. Why do we endure the discipline we receive from God? Because it's worth it. Why do we discipline our kids, even though it might make them mad for a moment? They might not like us very much. They might say mean things to us because it's worth it. It's worth it because of what we will develop. It tells us that in the second part of verse 11 there about this peaceful fruit of righteousness that is developed in us through discipline. You know, I've got a, a lemon tree in my backyard that we, we've had there for a couple years and started to produce finally decently. And then my dad came over and my dad, uh, they live up in Ventura County and, and they've got kind of a big property and he's got I don't know, a couple dozen fruit trees and grows all sorts of stuff. So my dad gets in my backyard and starts going, oh, well, uh, this is a sucker right here. This is actually draining the life out of your tree. You need to get this off of there. And this and oh, this one too, this one, that, yep, yep. He's telling me all these things that I hadn't, I just all looked kind of the same to me. I didn't realize that there were some things that needed to be cut off the tree. And God's discipline is like that. It's pruning off the things in our lives which are draining us from being all that he desires us to be. And we might think, hey, I liked that. Or, hey, that doesn't actually seem that bad. Why does that need to be cut off? And God, though, is saying, I see the bigger picture, and I'm taking that off and pruning off the pieces that need to go. So when we're disciplining our kids, we got to realize, is my focus temporary or long-term? If I focus only on the temporary, it's not going to last. Here's what I mean. Am I disciplining because it's just something that annoys me? Or am I disciplining because it's something that needs to be actually addressed? Am I disciplining because we're, we're in public and it makes me look bad in front of other people? Or am I disciplining for short-term fixes to a long-term problem that maybe needs to be addressed differently? You know, there are very few things of, of value in this life that won't cost you something. Very few things. We want things to come so easy in life, but life does not work that way. We want to find a quick fix for everything. We want to become a better parent, but we want it to just happen. We want to become a better husband or wife, but we want, you know, the other person to work on their issues because they're the problem, of course. We want them to work on it. Everything of value will cost you. It's tough for us when we do discipline, but it's worth it. Proverbs 29, 17 says, discipline your child and it will bring you peace of mind and give you delight. Let me just ask, if you're a parent or grandparent in this room right now, just raise your hand if you'd like a little more peace of mind about your kids or your grandkids. Like a little more peace of mind? There we go. Yeah, right? We would all like just a little more peace of mind and to delight. 
And so we've got to take this long view of discipline so that we can see the character built that we, we want to see. But what about you? When it comes to God's discipline in, in your life, have you had a short-term view of it? Just going, why? Why now? Why me? Or the long-term view saying, okay, God, I don't understand all of it, but you're doing something here that's going to be worth it in the end. I'm going to submit to this. I'm going to, I'm going to invest the energy in this. And maybe with your, maybe with your kids, those of you who are actively parenting, you know, maybe you've held back on disciplining the way you should because you've been too interested in being their friend. You might need to step up and, and look at some different approaches. Maybe you've over-disciplined because you've been more concerned about how you look immediately in the situation. And maybe you need to step back and reevaluate. Maybe, for all of us, maybe you've resented God for the discipline he's brought into your life. And maybe you need to simply surrender and, and submit to the hard things he uses in your life. Here's, here's the today's next step is this. Choose a long-term view of discipline in your life and your kid's life. Choose a long-term view. Look out there down the road because nothing great happens without discipline. We can't build great lives without discipline, great families. We can't build uh, a great church without discipline. Sometimes it stings. Sometimes it hurts. But imagine what God can do with us if we will yield ourselves to his discipline. Would you stand with me as we, we pray? Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this time, for this space, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we would, we would submit to your discipline that you bring into our lives. God, that we would realize we may not always see the immediate benefit, but God, that we would ultimately trust that you know what you're doing and that you are good. God, in the lives of our kids, Lord, there are many families represented in this service today, Lord, some who are maybe watching online. And Lord, I pray that you would help us, God, to be intentionally, and just be intentional about our discipline with our kids, looking for what are we trying to develop instead of just what are we trying to control right here and now. Lord, there's, there's times we got to stop behavior in a moment. That is true, but Lord, help us to see the bigger picture of what we're trying to grow. So Lord, we, we give you this time of response we're coming to you right now. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. You know, we're gonna open up this, this front here as an altar for you to pray. We have people here that will be here. We'd love to pray with you. Maybe as we've talked today about being God's child and experiencing his discipline, maybe there's somebody here today who you'd say, hey, I don't think I'm God's child yet. I don't think I know him. We would love to help you begin a relationship with Jesus today. That would be our, our honor to be able to do so. So I want to encourage you to respond through your singing, to respond through your prayer, to respond through your, your conversation you may need to have as we sing together.